yellow. So I am just turning my lights on because I've forgotten to. It's very bright and sunny here, so it's weird having to have the lights on. And normally I need them to be able to see, but not so much today. Um, so I've been looking around for some really nice exercises that I like to do that are filled with ease. And I've shared some of them with you. Um, and one of the things that I'm finding I'm really liking at the moment is um, going through Pinterest boards that I have many of. This one is a folk art bird board and I really love these kind of a stylized kind of birds in flight shapes. And I've been playing around. This artist, um, Japanese artist, has some really awesome kind of shapes that I've found. And I absolutely love the shape of these owls they're gorgeous they look like they're stamped um which is really clever this idea of having kind of a really basic bird shape i think that's probably where they are a basic kind of bird shape of a body and then almost um rectangular with a curve on the top wings and this little kind of u shape in there and then also this idea of the wings kind of coming out as like u shapes i'm really liking that kind of idea, this kind of thing. They're very, very stylized. These are also beautiful. I, this idea of, of doing the bird and then putting the folk art into it is really quite cool. So what I want to show you is how you can play around with and be inspired by ideas like that. So you can see we're looking at these kind of um, wing shapes. And there's the body in the middle and there's this curvy wing shape. And you've got the same sort of thing here, body in the middle, and then these have got kind of pointy wing shapes, and we've got two wings coming from the top. And then here, we've kind of got this kind of body shape. Now, the body shape's different here because it's kind of a semicircle, but I'm really looking at how the wings are coming off. So they've really got those kind of, like half rainbows almost, shape coming off. And I think that's it for those kind of ones. And again, with the owls, again, they've got that kind of, a curved shape coming off that then has got the the wing edging shape and there's another one that's got that here this seagull type bird that's got the central bit and then these kind of u-shapes then some feather shapes <coughs> excuse me i am so sorry about those sneezes i have taken my allergy tablet but it's super warm here and it's really like high pollen counts for hay fever so my allergies are going a bit mad at the moment. So we're going to look at how we can use that idea and the idea of those shapes to kind of inspire us. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my little mixing palette there and I'm probably going to work with a number five spotter. I was working with a number eight round yesterday and that was quite fun. But I'm thinking I might like a spotter and a number, a zero, hmm, I might want a triple zero actually I think, yeah triple zero, so a number five spotter, a triple zero spotter and then an old brush to pick up colour with. And you can see I've got some leftover bits of colour in here so I'm going to kind of grab something yellowy to go in this one and I'm actually going to go for a transparent yellow, I'm going to move this over so you can see what I'm doing. So this is why I'm using my old brush, I've got some water and then I'm just going in and I'm going to pop some water in to wet what was there and add some more pigment and then a few blobs of water. My water, I'll be honest, isn't very clean. In fact, it's rather murky. Um, and I think I'm going to go for some blue. I can put any kind of blue that I want to in here. So I'm just going for something a little bit different to that, a little bit of a, a dark, slightly darker blue. And just mix it in. I'll get an interesting mix of blue. And then Alongside that, I'm going to put something kind of pinky ready in here, I think. Um, let's see, random pick, that one, whatever that one is. See how that one looks. Yep, that's what I'm going for. So, just basically I'm picking three colours that are roughly within that idea of primary colours. Something that is kind of a cyan blue, and then I'm going for a pinkier red rather than a, an orangey red. Um, so something that's kind of a little bit magenta -y. and then a yellow, lemony yellow, or in this case it's a transparent yellow. And I've got those three colours, and that's pretty much what I'm going to use. I need to add a little bit of water to each of these, so I'm just dipping my brush in, and then not even touching the surface, kind of just dripping and shaking it off my brush into there. You could use pipette if you wanted to. Um, 
because I want to be able to do some glazing. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to work with these colours in layers and we're going to glaze up those bird shapes and see what kind of an effect we can get. I'm hoping that we can get an effect that's a bit like a flock of birds. Now, I've decided today that I'm going to work on um, a piece of paper that is A5. It's an A4 sheet folded in half. This is the same as two of the little cards that I normally work on. And I'm looking at my number five brush and I'm actually thinking it might be too big for what I want, so I'm going to switch and grab a number three. So I'm going to wet that. I've put my colour lifting brush just on my towel that's just out of shot. I'm wetting my brush, taking off a little bit of the excess water, and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of this blue. I'm going to see how watery or not watery it is. And we're thinking about, okay, what we're thinking about is a bird shape, so a little bit pointy maybe, and then a kind of flattened end. So this is this is my body shape, a bit like a torpedo kind of shape. And then getting some words that some wings rather that curve off and they seem to curve uh, kind of the shape I'm liking does this and then it tends to do that and then either curve or point at the end and so you can decide if you want it to be curvy or pointy I'm just going to pop that on and then I'm going to do the same the other side it's okay if they don't match exactly you know what we're doing here is we're basically doing pretty much a flat wash we're trying to get an even amount of colour but we're not worrying if there are some little blobs of water on there and we're getting those onto the page and we're getting to fill in the central part before it all dries I'm just going to have a go at that again see what else I can create and I'm just slightly staggering them so they are a little bit Removed. Now you could go for a, a shape that comes out at the tail more if you wanted to, so you could make this this tail bit come out. But I'm quite liking the simple torpedo shape. And then I'm going to just curve the wing and curve the underwing and then join it. And the idea is that when I look at it, the shape communicates to me the idea of a bird in flight without lots of details. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for thinking, yes, that looks like a bird that is flying. And I'm kind of getting that. I'm kind of liking it. I'm going to pop another one here. So there's my kind of torpedo shape. And I'm flattening off that end. Like that. And again, curve, second curve, join. Curve, second curve, join. And picking up more paint and just while it's still wet going into those edges if you find that it is very warm where you are and your edges are drying make your paint a little bit more watery so that when you draw in their edge the edges they're paler and then when you are ready to fill in you fill in and then just you would just drip in a little bit more color but you won't end up with a really intense color you'll still have quite a pale colour because we're going to glaze we want to be working with quite watery layers at the moment and I'll pop another one of those in here there's a bit of a torpedo shape that and curve of the wing curve of the wing curve and go round and you can see that it really is you know it's it's doing the job of getting me to think it's a bird. That's kind of what I want. I'm going to have a go here and see what it looks like if I use um, two wings at the top. So I'm going to do that torpedo shape like this. And then this time I'm going to do the front curve of the wing like that and join it. And then I'm going to do the next curve of the wing like that and join it and see. Mm, I don't think I've quite managed to get that to look right. Maybe I need a longer body. Give it a slightly longer body. Yeah, that's okay. I might need to come. I might need to come from the same point here. So if it does that, if that was a bit thinner, that might work better. I'll try that again in another space. Remember a lot of the work we're doing like this, 
mindful kind of watercolours that we're doing is about uh, getting to know our paints. It's about getting to know what we like as artists. It's about being able to play and not being too worried about you know the outcome. That the outcome is secondary to what we get from the process of doing it. They can't, yeah, they still say bird in flight. I like this shape better, but I, I can see how I could, you know, I could like that. I wonder if it would look any better if it was just one wing that I could see. Because wanna... the important thing we know about getting a pattern or a design to pull together is to put things in more than one place. So I'm going to pop another one on. I'm just going to try. How does it look if I just have one wing? Hmm. I don't know. My brain thinks it might be looking a bit weird. But I might like it. I wonder if I did another wing and did it like that and it overlapped. Whether that would. Now, see, you can't really see that line now, but I think I quite like that idea. So, if I darken this front one a little bit, does that help? Yes, it does. I like that. So, it might be that I could play around with that idea. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to just pop part of a body here, just that's there. And then I'm going to pop the first wing on, like that. And this one I'm going to leave with just one wing, because it could be that it's the other wing is over here. And then I think I'm going to put a little bit of a, just a poking head there. And a little bit... Of. There are gaps, and that's okay. I'm going to leave some of the gaps. I need some gaps. What I'm going to do next? So this is done, and I'm going to dry it. So at this point, you can decide if you want to put any detail into your birds. I'm going to show you the kind of thing that I might put in, but honestly, you could very easily just not put detail in at this point. I've got some. Um, bleed proof white it's Dr PH Martins and I'm going to use that triple zero I am going to pop a little white eye onto each bird because it helps to distinguish the back from the front which I like Go. I'm going to wash that out really well. I've noticed with this that, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of got this really thick lumpy bit at the top. So I'm going to get one of my old brushes and see if it's scrapable back inable or not. And I'll just poke it in like that and see if I give it a good shake if it kind of works back in or not. Because it's an awful lot to waste otherwise. So give it a good shake. I'll be back to it in a minute. So leave it there. So I need to give that another dry now because I've put those eyes on. So I'm going to use a different colour but the same number three brush. Um, my dogs are sitting next to me. I've got Watson on my right and Sherlock on my left and they zonked out. Watson's still trying to get comfy because my chair's apparently in his way very much like me to move it please and I'm like no I want to do a bit of painting dude so you might get up and have a wander around um, so I'm going to go for doing that kind of shape again now you could if you wanted to when you're going in this different colour you could try a different wing shape so you may want to try a more pointed wing shape like that you could do that and you could try how that was I'm just going to put some of those. I quite like the idea of having the red birds having a different wing shape. And this will be our next layer. And so if you weren't putting any detail in, you just go on straight away to painting this next layer. What I'm doing is I'm putting some of the birds in that are in the gaps without really doing too much glazing. I'm going to do a little bit here where this wing is going in. And I think I probably have something 
in there. So I'm going to pop a little pointy winged bird in there. And I think I'll leave it at that for now because those are the really big obvious gaps that I could see. So then to put the detail in, I would grab a finer brush and I'm actually going to go for using the same colour on the top. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that blue if I can find it again. Hmm. Where were you? I think you were this one. Let's see, were you? Maybe. Might be that one. Well, we'll go for this one. It'll be, it can be close enough. I don't mind if it's a little bit different. Bit of water in it so it's not too dark, not too pigmented. I'm going to use the double zero brush and I'm just going to put some really simple patterns. I'm going to put some dashes in here, just still in blue. And I'm going to have a little bit of a play at putting some dashes on the bodies and some dashes on the wings to see how I like it. You could do finer dashes if you wanted to. You could use a Posca pen or a paint pen for this. Any pen, in fact, that is waterproof once it's dry. Because we're going to be layering on top. You don't want anything that's going to not be waterproof when it's dry. So if it's going to move. If you're not sure if a pen is waterproof when it's dry, you get a scrap piece of paper. You draw with the pen. Give it a blast with the heat gun that you would normally give it. And then get just a, a wet brush and paint a line of water over it. And you will see if it starts to kind of smudge or bleed just leave the water on it to sit for a little bit so that it's kind of quite soaked um, and that will uh, let you know if the brush is um, waterproof or not the pen is waterproof or not rather so as you can see putting these little dashes in so I haven't talk to you about you know setting myself up for being mindful this time and the reason I haven't done that is because I want to talk you through the process and when I'm talking you through the process sometimes it is still mindful but sometimes my brain has to keep um, thinking about what the important bits are to, to let you know and things like that so I haven't deliberately set myself up with a relaxation or anything like that today I have come to my painted table with the intention of being mindful about this, of being present and focused with explaining what I'm doing and observing what happens and being kind of curious and not attached to the outcome. So in terms of the principles, I am very much painting with those in mind. And it is still mindful and centering to me. really enjoy doing these repetitive dashes dashes and dots I mean I love more complicated patterns sometimes too but at the moment dashes and dots I really like so you can see now we've added detail to these but we don't have to if this isn't your thing and you don't like doing like brushwork with dashes or pen work with dashes well, you know, you want something that's really simple. This kind of exercise will work beautifully without them. Just going in to finish off popping the dashes here. And then we're going to give it a, a dry. Once we finish doing the dashes, we'll give it a dry with the heat gun. Then we're going to start adding some more red and kind of layering it up and glazing. So a bit like the exercise we did with the botanicals, we can see how many layers if we want to so if you, you like that kind of challenge you can see how many layers of the different birds that you can pop on you might want to just do a layer of each so that you're going to get an idea with these particular three colors how do they glaze over each other you know what does it look like with the red over blue and yellow over blue and yellow over red and all three together what kind of you know, colour combinations am I getting from glazing rather than mixing? And glazing is one of those techniques that you really use a lot with watercolour. So anything that enables you to have an opportunity to practice it in a way that is really relaxed, really just focused on the process, 
not worrying about you know whether you get it right or not or how it looks and what the end thing is but just being able to to do it and to see what happens without any kind of judgment is really fantastically good for your watercolour technique as well as being incredibly I find anyway good for my kind of mental health and how I am feeling and approaching things you know you, you kind of it starts to um, almost I don't know spread over into other things so you find that this practicing of being present I really notice when I'm not being present doing other things so you know that thing of getting your phone out to check it I notice when I'm doing things like that that I'm not being fully present with other things that I'm doing and I can make a choice about whether I want to be more present I also start to notice that I'm noticing if I am being judgy of myself or of others or, or whatever and, and, and being judgmental rather than discerning I like that, I don't like that and that again it gives you an opportunity to decide if you know if you want to alter that I also find that the being present practice is really helpful when there's lots of other things going on that knowing that I can actually bring myself into the moment and really be in the moment and not have other things from my brain that coming in and can really focus on something that is really helpful to me So we're going to go in now with some more of our kind of pinky red colour. We're going to put them in some of the gaps. Oh, Watson's stretching out. He's found a comfy spot at last. Oh, that was a big sigh. We're going to do these so that they actually overlap and they go over. And this is where the glazing comes in. Now, if you haven't watched any more of the videos, I'd obviously recommend you do because they're quite good and helpful and I talk a lot about glazing but you can see I'm being very gentle and I'm stroking this watery mix of red over the top trying to stir the paper and the paint as little as possible and that layer of blue I don't want to disturb it at all it's dry so if I'm very careful I can put my red on the top without reactivating or disturbing it and so you'll see if I do a red bird here so we're doing that torpedo body shape again and then we've got a pointy ring back a bit further. you can see that you can still see the blue bit the tip of the nose through there it hasn't reactivated the colors that you can see are from glazing them on top of each other it's a bit like if you've ever had sweets that have that, got that um, cellophane wrapping in different colors and then you put them over the top of each other and they make a different color it's a bit like that I'm going to continue to pop in some of these red shapes until I feel that I'm ready to move on to yellow, to be honest. Now this is a really good place to see because there are dashes there. You want to make sure your paint is watery enough that you can stroke it on and you can see none of those dashes have moved. Let me just zoom in for you. So you can see they're, they're still there, they're not wet, they're not bleeding or spreading out and that's what we're looking for. So zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to move so you can see. I'm going to do one here so you can just see a little bit closer. So the torpedo shape, very lightly. I think of it as like stroking the surface and then there's a little hair on my brush let's get rid of that and pointy wing shape just tip of the brush just to get the colour in and then the same up here that's what we're doing so let's have a look and see if there's any places where we think we need a little bit more of a red bird I'm kind of thinking I might have a bit of a red bird kind of here, and maybe I'd see a little hint of a wing 
and a hint of a wing. And I think I might do a smaller kind of one here. Because I can vary the sizes. Get that pointy wing in there. And get a pointy wing in here. And you're starting to see how they're starting to overlap now. I might put a, a tail there for that. And you probably get a bit of the wings showing because they're tending to kind of come level with the tail. So I'll pop that in. And then I'm going to give these a good dry. And I'm going to go in with that yellow. Again, as I said, if you want to, you can pop eyes on. So I'm going to do that. Make sure my brush is nice and clean. I'm taking it from the sides a little bit if I can. There's a little bit of water in that there, so it might be a little bit watery. You could use Posca pen, you could use acrylic ink, uh, anything. And you know, you could do the eyes in black or you could do them in a deeper colour of the paint if you wanted to, or mist them up entirely. You know, you decide if you think they need them. So good clean and another dry. Back to that number three round. I've got the transparent yellow now. We'll see how that is. So these are going to start really overlapping. I'm making that kind of torpedo shape and I'm going to go back to the curvy wings like that but I'm actually going to make them so they make a bit of a point so kind of a mix of the two so I'm going to curve curve and then make it go to a point well a little kind of roundy point I might make them rounded very gently over there because we don't want to get green spreading into the rest of our wings. You can see it's green where it's over the blue but the green's not going into the rest of the wings. I think I'm going to go for a torpedo shape here and I am going to go for the curve. Yeah, I am going for a curvy end of my wings and this one will come down here. You can see the kind of orange that you get there pop another one in here and this is just a case of wherever you feel like there might be a gap and really gently so I'm actually putting the colour on the white part first and then almost dotting to get the colour to join where I can rather than pulling my brush you can see there it has bled a little bit where the darker blue was but that's okay you know it's all about the process of, you know, we're learning how best works for us to do this. What, what makes it so that we can get good glazing going on. And I always find it harder when I'm putting yellow over blue, so this is a really good bit of practice for me. But it's fun and it's relaxing and, you know, I don't mind if it bleeds a little bit or if some more wings are different sizes. That's not the point for me, this is not what's coming out at the end, it's the doing of it. So I'm starting to look now at where... Where are the places where kind of it's, uh, it's drawing my eye to say maybe there should be some kind of yellow there and trying to put in so I'm trying to put in part of a bird here I'm going to put in the front bit here and I'm going to kind of move up I'm looking here and thinking, well, there's an obvious kind of place that I can put one. And you don't have to do them blue first. You could do them yellow first or red first. You could don't have to use 
these colours you can use any colours that you want to and as you can see I've put dashes on that first layer but I'm not too bothered about putting the details onto these layers at the moment if I felt I wanted to I could stop and I could do that yeah, it's, it's a very loose exercise there's no right, there's no wrong just have a go see what your paints do what kind of colours do you get how do they move? How watery do you need to make them? Can you get a flock of birds effect with you know very little detail and just really basic shapes? And I think the answer is yes you can. I think this is starting to feel like a flock of birds. Now I can't put that bird wing in there because this yellow is not going to be dry enough so I'm leaving that for now and I may come back to it may leave it just as one of those birds that has one wing up in the air and I can do this one here I'm not sure if I can do yeah I can just about I can do that one there so it feels like there's a bit of a gap maybe here so I'll draw that and the wings would come from here I'm just kind of estimating roughly where they would come. I'm finding it is easier for me if my brush is fairly loaded with paint. That seems to be helping because the I can use a much lighter pressure and still have the colour coming off my brush. So I'm probably reloading a lot more than I would normally because that seems to be helping me. And I'll pop. In there, yeah, I'm running out of yellow, so I'll just grab a little bit more. Add some water in there. Okay, let me get that. Oh, that's I've got a lot of paint on my brush. There, yeah, okay, that's better. I think maybe here needs one. It's quite a fat yellow one, or wide anyway. It's really And then again here, and they're feeling quite flock-like now. So I need to give another blast of the heat gun. Grab my white. I'm going to pop some eyes into those yellows, and then I'll be able to give it another blast of the heat gun. So let's see, who needs an eye? Ooh, that's a lot of paint on there. Ooh, you need one. 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 So just having the inclination that it might be fun to put some white marks on. I'm just going to see how that works on one of these yellow birds. So I'll zoom you in so you can see. I may not do it on all of them, but I just want to see what it looks like. And I'm going to just pop some white dashes on. Oh, I do like it. So I'm using a zero brush and this bleed proof white. And the other thing that would work beautifully would be a dip pen. And white ink. Now I know from trying it that this blue proof white is too thick for my um, dip pen so I have to water it down so as I don't have a separate little jar to do that in I am tending to not do it at the moment uh, until I can find a little jar that I can mix up in because otherwise it feels like a waste if I don't use it all so it's okay if I'm going to do a fairly big project and use a lot of it but if you do have a white dip pen and white dip ink that you could use this would work beautifully to do that I'm really liking how that looks so I'm going to probably do that in a few other places oh Sherlock's trotting off to do something something's occurring in the garden apparently not going to do it on every yellow bird, I don't think, just some of them. What 
Watson's noticed that Sherlock is going into the garden and then has gone, yeah, you go in the garden, I'll just stay here and flop down again. Watson, this morning, was out in the garden with me, looking for grass to chew, as dogs do. Sherlock managed to dig a hole, so once I've finished doing this, I'm going to go and fill that in again. I wouldn't mind, but he's been having walks, so... I think he just likes digging holes. Someone said to me, is it because he's bored or not getting in a fork? I was like, mm, it could be. He hasn't maybe been getting as many as he would normally. But he really has now. And I think it's just that he likes to dig. Um, one more place. I think this one. Maybe that one. I'm going to go for this one. Because it's closer. Uh, so just little dashes. You could do dots. Dots would look awesome. You could um, you could easily use acrylic paint for this if you've got something like fluid acrylic. I think you'd be better using um, the I think it's titanium white, not the zinc white. Zinc white is for mixing, so it may not show up at all. But if all you've got is zinc white, I'm sure it will work perfectly adequately. Um, you could also use white gouache, but I'm not sure how well that would glaze over um, because I find when it's thicker and you need to put white on thicker for it to show up then it's much um, much harder to glaze over it without lifting it so if you're going to be using gouache and white gouache then I'll probably say keep it for your last layer where you're not going to do any more glazing and then you could do it quite quite securely. There we go, so I'm going to wash my brush off. And you can keep adding birds to this for as long as you like. I might add another few in some of these gaps. And I'm probably going to go for the blue because I've probably got less of the blue than the others I think. Because I'm starting off with them first I tend to try and leave some gaps. So I'm just going to go back in and add a few blue. Give it a quick blast with the heat gun to make sure those white dashes are dry. So, get some of this blue and I'm just going to go in to some of these places where it kind of feels like, I think here. And I go for... First, that nice kind of curvy shape. Isn't it interesting how such a sh simple shape can create the impression of a bird in flight? You know, it's not a complicated thing, it's not. I think this is definitely one that you could do with children. I think that white is not properly dry because I can see it moving and lifting so I'm just going to be a little bit careful because it's thicker it probably takes a longer drying time so I can see I want to put something up here so I'll get that in but I'm going to try my best to avoid places where that white is and might not be dry. I think he's going to need a little bit of a longer body that's it. And another one. Like that. Where else? Here needs something. I'm just going to put the body in and then put the ends of the wings coming like that. Try not to go onto the other page where I can. I think here. There's a little bit of a gap for me, so probably going to go for there and the body going off the page and then adding in wings like that. They're perhaps a bit thinner, so a bit fatter there. Maybe here for like half a bit of a body and just one wing. Just coming out. And I think for me, that now is looking 
barely done. There's a little gap here. So again, I'm going to do part of a body and a little bit of a wing. See if it's half on and half off the page. And I'm I'm feeling like that feels like a flock of birds to me. So I'm I'm quite happy with that. I found out about the bleed proof white here that it it does run a little bit and needs a really good dry. So that's a good thing to know. Given that a really good dry, I've washed out my brush and I've just popped them out of the way. I'm going to move my palette and I'm going to have a little look now. And I think what I would like to do is give it a border. Um, sometimes I really like to give pages borders and this is one of those times. Many, many moons ago, I used to be very into scrapbooking and I still got bits of scrapbook paper left and I often use them to pop underneath when I'm doing things like this. So what I'm going to do, make sure my pen is working, I'm using a black and I think I'm going to do like a scalloped edge. I think that's my plan. I'm just going to try a little bit because I can always turn it into a flat edge if I don't want a scallop. I think I'm liking the idea of scallops today. They don't have to be even. They can be different sizes. Let's go along and draw them. Having the piece of paper underneath means that I can kind of come off and now I'm getting right up to my edge. When I get to the corner, you can see that I made a scallop beat kind of on the corner. I'm going to do this. The end of my pen is a little bit, it's kind of a little bit worn. I think I probably used it on something like a stone or on wet paper. A little bit's caught on it. And when that happens, sometimes you can get not as clean an edge line. But, and again, when I get to this corner, I've made it so that it's a scallop that you can see. I'm going to pop these corners in, just like that. And then go along. My hobby's just come down. He was practicing the piano, and so I was doing a video. So the dogs have run off to join him in the garden because that's way more fun than sitting in here with me, apparently. So you can see that. Make sure that's that. fun as an edge but would you believe I'm now changing my mind and think I want it to be straight gosh I'm so indecisive today let's see I think I do so I'm going to just pull down a line and hope that it works I've pulled a bit of the paper off there so should be better over the bits where I haven't filled them in. I'm just going to pull down a roughly straight line and then go in. And just basically colour it in black. Sometimes it needs a couple of goes because the, it picks up the watercolour paint and you kind of get a little bit of a, a not quite so black black coming through. I'm going to give this pen a little bit of a shake now because I feel like the ink's not flowing as well as it was. Press down to make sure it's all loaded up and just. Right, I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do the same here. You can see it's not making a solid black line at the moment so I'm going to need to go over that you had one of the big fat markers that has the chisel tip they're perfect for doing this because you can just pull the chisel tip along I don't think I have one, I definitely don't have one out on my desk I do have a little bag of Posca pens with a few in that are new um, that might have a big one in 
think I bought one of those sets that had lots of different sizes in when I first started using Posca pens to see what sizes I used a lot and didn't really ever get to using the big one and didn't love the chisel tips that much so there might be one of those hanging around somewhere as you can see the bleed proof white doesn't want to go underneath this at all it wants to stay white so I'm just working over that a little bit and I'm going to turn it again and take my line up here and you can see it's really not a great line when I'm pulling it so I'm just going to go up to it as I'm colouring in this edge doesn't have to be perfect I'm just checking, I'm sure this is a fairly new pen so I might have just annoyed the tip a little bit with the watercolours I'm just going to turn it round and persevere a little bit You could again, if you've got acrylic paint, you could do it with that. If you've got black acrylic ink, you could use that. What I would actually, what I would often normally do rather than Posca pen, is I would use um, Indian ink. But whenever I use Indian ink, I tend to end up getting it all over my nails and everywhere, and then they get stained and they get all dirty. And I just don't fancy that today. Also, I have to refill my little teeny weeny pot that's got the engine ink in, I think. So, that's always a messy job. Although, right at this point, I'm thinking it would have been way easier to use Indian ink, and I've got a lovely black. So, there we go, we're kind of getting there. Last bit here. I don't mind if these lines aren't you know absolutely straight I, I don't I embrace wonk within um, these kind of pages and it's just I think I wanted some black sometimes blacks really makes colors pop but I fancied a black border and there's you know something lovely about following your inclination and your little nudges and just go in with it Okie dokie, so there we go, got that, I can see a couple of little bits up here that are not, that are drawing my eye that I can just go over, so I'm just checking, are there any places that are really drawing my eye that haven't got a good black colour or there's a little white bit or something like that and I'm trying to tackle those if I can. So that is our finished page it's a bit tricky for you to see the black border on my black page so you can see like that that it I really like how that finishes off it kind of with the primaries I really like that so that's a really lovely simple exercise that you can do and you can include color mixing glazing mark making with paint really looking for a simple shape and I'm quite pleased with my flock of birds which is the effect I was going for and it's certainly one that I would come back to because it's lovely and simple and it's got ease but it's got enough in it to allow me to be focused and present um, and engaged so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you're all well and I'll see you very very soon <laughs>